Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and we are continuing on with the U uh, problem sets with IXL with the circle stuff and today I will be doing U8 uh, which is titled the perimeter polygons with an inscribed circle. So you're really only going to see a variation or two uh, of problems here not a large selection of problems. First thing I want to say is uh, the term inscribed circle. So what I tell my students is you can break down the word inscribed uh, so you understand the meaning a little bit better. So scrib, the root word scrib, S-C-I-R-B, uh, means to write. If anyone knows Spanish, you know the word escribir uh, means to write. And you can find it uh, other places in English like scribe. Uh, someone that is a scribe is someone that uh, writes something down for you know a king or something like that uh, and then in is in this case is referring to inside so it's a circle an inscribed circle is a circle that is written inside um, another shape so right here you see in this diagram that this circle is written inside the triangle it's an inscribed circle okay now there's really a quick way you can solve these problems these are pretty simple Okay, so what the problem is asking right here is it wants us to find the length of GH. So the length of this line right there. Okay, just a little bit of a puzzle. So first we're gonna start with FG right here. Do we know the length of FG is one? So FG is one. And we know the uh, those parts are uh, tangent, so Therefore, we know that this side is equal to this side right here. So if FG is one, that means FK is also going to be one. Okay. Now it tells us that the entirety of FJ is four. It's a length of four. So if we know this piece is one and the entire thing is four, that means JK is three. Then we use the same logic as last time. And we know that JK is three and therefore IJ or ji is going to be three as well. Then it tells us the entire length of hj is going to be five. So that means all that's left here for hi is two. And since we know this side is two, we know the length of gh is going to be two. So just a little bit of a puzzle, right? But it's pretty easy. Type in two, there we go. Okay, uh, let's do another one. Okay, it, want, it wants us to find the length of QR, which is this line right here. Okay, so we are going to start with what we know, and we know that, uh, let's see, for instance, right here, we know the length of OT is 2, and therefore OP is going to also be 2. Uh, therefore, we know since the entire length here, from OQ is three. That means all we have left between uh, P and Q is one. And since we know the rule here, we know that this one is also going to be the same over here for that side. So the answer should just be one. Okay. Um, same deal here. I'll do this one and then I'll jump Again, same same type of uh, same type of problem, except it looks like we have almost a rhombus here, not ex or maybe maybe a rhombus. Uh, yeah, perhaps a rhombus. We'll see. And so it is asking us to find the length of v w, so v and w, so just this length right here. Okay. So let's work our way this way. So. We know that VU is going to be 20, so TU is also going to be 20. Okay, what else can we figure out from here? Well, it looks like that we know this entire side is 25. That entire thing is 25. Uh, but we also know that this side is 19, just from X to Y, right? Just like it's from a Y to Z, so 19. Okay. And what else can we find from here? 
what else could we find? Well, we know the entire thing is 26 here, so that means all we have left for uh, x, uh, wx is going to be 7. So like that. Okay. And which means that that's going to be the same. That means we're going to have 7 here. Okay. So let's try that. Let's see if that works. VW is going to be, we're saying 7. That is correct. Okay. So you just work your way from there. Uh, let me skip forward to see if there's anything new or different. Nope. Once you get to the end, it's the same exact set of problems, except you um, have decimals, I guess. Um, so you're just doing addition, subtraction, whatnot with decimals. Okay. Same deal as over here, except uh, they give you some variables is what it looks like. Asking for why. Um, we can do this one. All right, let's see what we know already. So it looks like this side is 8, EF is 8, so therefore we know DE is also going to be 8. Okay. Um, and so all we have left for dk is 7, because the entire thing is 15. If dk is 7, that means jk is 7. If the entire length of this side is 12, that means we just have 5 left over. Okay, if they have to be the same, then we have ij and hi both being 5. Okay, uh, which means uh, we only have a 4 left over here, which means fg also has to be 4. Okay, so we know it has to equal four, and they tell us that it equals y minus three. Okay, that's totally fine. Let's just write it out algebraically. So four has to equal y equals, or y <clears throat> minus three, excuse me. And now to get y by itself, because that's what the question is asking, we'll just add three to both sides. So we have seven equals y, or y equals seven. Okay, so y is just going to equal seven. That's it. So we'll go over here, type in 7, and there you go. Okay, that's all you have. This one is a same type of problem. We have a, a variable here, TU. You just do the puzzle and set them equal to each other.